Ukraine is winning the missile drone war. Russian air defense is in chaos. Ukraine continues to sink the Russian fleet. Kyiv is winning the missile drone war. Former Royal Navy officer and air defense expert Tom Sharp writes about this in a column for The Telegraph. He noted that the intensity of Ukraine's attacks on Russian ships, port infrastructure and energy facilities is amazing. At the end of last week, there was a complex attack on the port of Novorossiysk, the Twapsi oil refinery and the adjacent oil terminal. The attack was carried out by drones, including naval ones. The Russian defense tried to counteract them, but in vain. On Sunday, ATA CMS struck a pier in Sevastopol, sinking the minesweeper Kurovets, one of the few Russian warships that did not flee Crimea for the relative safety of Novorossiysk. There are also reports that a Karakurt-class missile corvette was sunk during the same attack. Since it was potentially armed with a long-range and extremely powerful caliber missile, this loss would be of great significance to the Russian Federation if confirmed. Besides losing another ship, this is important on several levels. First, many believed that ATA CMS's accuracy of about 9 meters was insufficient for use against ships. Additionally, the models in Ukrainian hands disperse large quantities of grenade-sized submissions, negating the need for a high precision. But it is unlikely that missiles with sub-munitions could have caused the ship to sink. However, such missiles are armor-piercing and can destroy tanks. Hitting a ship with this missile is guaranteed to cause significant damage and uncontrolled fire caused by submissions can cause the ship to sink. It is quite possible that the Ukrainians actually use a variant of the ATA CMS with a larger unitary warhead weighing 213 kilograms. This could certainly sink the ship, Sharp writes. However, if the Ukrainians have a unitary ATA CMS combat unit, it seems strange that they did not use some of them to destroy the Kirsch Bridge. Now that the Russians have built a railway to transport goods along the land bridge north of Azov from Russia to Crimea, the Kirsch Bridge is no longer an extremely important logistics supply route. But this is Ukraine's obvious goal. What is clear is that Russian air defense systems are still in a state of chaos. The previous ATA CMS attack destroyed a battery of S-400 anti-aircraft missiles and about 10 aircraft at Belbek Airfield. The strike exposed the limitations of the much-touted S-400. As the expert writes, in order to successfully protect against this type of attack, you need to have three levels. Prevent, detect and destroy. The alert feature relies on intelligence, satellite surveillance and other inputs to let you know that an attack is imminent. If you are smart and have the right tools at hand, you can hit the enemy before he launches. NATO has no idea on how to close Ukrainian sky. Business Insider the West already has an effective model for protecting Ukraine from Russian air attacks. This model was clearly demonstrated during the Iranian attack on Israel in April, writes the American edition of Business Insider. Former NATO Secretary General Anders Fogh Rasmussen in particular expressed the conviction that interceptor missiles can be launched from the territory of NATO member states neighboring Ukraine, such as Poland and Romania, to cover at least the western Ukrainian regions. According to Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, both the ruling and opposition parties in Germany express support for the idea of protecting the regions of Ukraine bordering NATO. For example, Roderick Kaiswetter, a politician from the opposition Christian Democrat Union and a former officer in the Bundeswehr's general staff compared Ukraine's defense to the West's efforts to prevent 300 missiles and drones fired by Iran in April from hitting Israel. Western countries could protect part of Ukraine's airspace near NATO territory and shoot down Russian drones and missiles. This would reduce the burden on the Ukrainian air defense and allow them to protect the front. As in the case of Israel, where France, Great Britain and others helped, they would not have become warring parties, Kaiswetter said in a comment to Business Insider. This opinion is shared by former NATO Secretary General Rasmussen. The idea to create a no-fly zone over part of Ukraine belongs to the Munich Security Conference expert Nico Lang and the former Assistant Secretary General of NATO, Lieutenant General Horst Heinrich Braus. As Lang stated, Closing the sky over Ukraine would allow creating a safe zone up to 70 kilometers wide on the state's border, relieving air defense forces in other areas of the front. If West does not step up, Putin's war machine will continue to grow stronger. Wall Street Journal 
Russia's military superiority over Ukraine will continue to grow if Western countries do not quickly step up, the Wall Street Journal writes, citing an intelligence official. Moscow's invasion of Ukraine has suddenly made Europe aware of the need to maintain large, capable armies. European intelligence officials say Russia is preparing for conflict with NATO within the next decade and aims to have a standing army of 1.5 million by the end of 2026. The publication says it is indicated that Putin previously called warnings about a potential Russian attack on NATO member countries complete nonsense. However, in early 2022, the Kremlin used similar language to ridicule American warnings that Russia was planning to invade Ukraine. The Wall Street Journal recalls that German Defense Minister Boris Pistorius warned that Europe must prepare for a possible war with Russia by the end of the decade. He also called the abolition of conscription in Germany in 2011 a mistake, adding that it should be reintroduced. Sweden, with the exception of a short break in the 2010s, has relied on conscription to fill its army for more than a century. This year, of the approximately 100,000 young Swedes expected to enlist, only 6,200 completed conscription, meaning the annual increase was just over 10%. The country aims to recruit 8,000 conscripts next year and 10,000 shortly thereafter. Selection is based on physical and mental fitness, IQ tests and motivation to serve. The article notes, it is reported that draft evasion in Sweden is punishable by a fine or imprisonment for up to a year. Let's remember that Business Insider previously concluded that Russia, it seems, after two years of large-scale invasion, has begun to take war seriously. They pointed out that Putin's war machine looks very different today than it did at the start of the conflict. The Russian defense industrial base is running at full capacity and Putin recently appointed an economist as his defense minister to stimulate mass production of weapons. Last summer, Moscow stopped the counter-offensive of Ukraine with a strong defense while rebuilding supplies and transitioning to a wartime economy.